Thank you. Good morning. I'm Matthew Goldman. I'm the founder and CEO of Wallaby Financial. And with me is Todd Zeno, my co-founder and CTO. And we just want to thank you for choosing level one. It's the best auditorium, clearly. We're glad you could be here and start the day off with us. So we're here today to talk to you about wallets as a service. So some background on Wallaby. We started Wallaby a couple years ago as a way to help people optimize personal finance. We'll be honest, we don't really believe in budgeting. Maybe corporate budgeting, but not personal budgeting. The problem with budgeting is that people have to keep track of what they're spending very carefully, and they have a lot of negative experiences. It's like dieting. You still want that latte. You know it's bad for you. You're going to buy it anyways. So we thought, how do we help consumers to save money, avoid fees, and better understand their personal finance without telling them they can't do the things they want to, right? So to that end, we built a platform that enables consumers to tell us what their credit cards are, how they want to use those credit cards, what their goals are, and allows us to calculate for them the optimal credit card for every situation and every purchase, online and offline, that will save them money or help them to avoid fees, maximize rewards, maximize cash flow, whatever they're interested in. But the next level of that platform is enabling you to integrate it into yours, and that's what we're here to talk about today. So when we first designed this platform in 2012 and released our first app, we always saw it as a really large data play where you could not only tell customers about their wallets, about their personal finance, we could segment our audience, understand who was looking for travel rewards, who was looking for cash back. Um, we could use machine learning to find more cohorts. What do you know, holders of, a, say, a Chase Freedom card have in common? And pour out a dynamic bidding platform where the issuers themselves can get involved and offer special bonuses. And so all of this means we were service-oriented from day one, so it was very easy to pull out the API and offer it for third-party use. So we're going to talk about two offerings today, Cardbase and Wasapi. I'm going to talk about Cardbase first. So Cardbase is simply the largest search engine for credit cards. Every credit card that's been issued in the US market, there's over 2,700 of them, both currently offered, as well as legacy cards. There's over 600 financial institutions that have issued these cards. You have your really famous ones, your Chase, your Discover, your Amex, but there's a lot of regional banks, there's a lot of credit unions out there that do a lot of innovative things. For example, First Niagara, if you look at our blog recently, they are the first ones to offer a true chip and pin card with all the EMV shift that's happening, not just chip and signature, but actual chip and pin. So a lot of innovation you'll see from regional banks and credit unions bubbles up and eventually becomes products that Amex or Chase will use. We have all that information. There's over 400 loyalty programs out there, all of your hotel points, your airline miles. There's a lot of the transferable points, which are all the rage right now. And then even most credit unions offer some sort of point which can be used for merchandise or cash back or statement credits. This results in over 5,000 reward earning rules. This is everything from your quarterly 5% cash back at gas stations. This is your double points on dining, you know, and all the restrictions that might come with that. Say it maxes out after you spend $5,000 in dining. All of that is delivered via modern API. So attributes and features of credit cards. There's obviously the annual fee, and again, even that is not always straightforward, because sometimes it's first year is free, and then ongoing is $95. Interest rates can vary based on your credit worthiness, so often the uh, issuers will show you three tranches. It could be like 15% APR for people with good credit, 20% APR for people with less than optimal credit. But there's a lot of attributes of these cards that go beyond the simple things. Um, a lot of cards offer car rental protection. They offer cell phone insurance. One thing you're seeing a lot right now is a free credit scores. There's a lot of commercials um, where that's being rolled out. You can access your FICO score online anytime. One thing in particular that's very compelling is free Wi-Fi. I think a lot of people hold cards and don't even realize they have it. A good example of this is the Starwood, profess, uh, Starwood Preferred Guest Card from Amex. It's a very popular credit card. Just as of last month, they changed their annual fee and they started offering free Wi-Fi with Boingo to offset that. When these changes went into effect, we updated Cardbase in real time. So if you were a consumer of Cardbase and using this information, you would have those changes immediately and be able to reflect those for whatever your uses are. So simple Cardbase response here. This is a lot of JSON. There will be a pop quiz later, so make sure you're reading that green text very carefully. But I think it's more uh, compelling to show you visually like, how this actually looks when you're using it. So how do we use Cardbase? When we launched the Cardbase API, we simultaneously launched 
a card-based guide on our own website. This brings all the search engine data to life, gives you the ability to search by issuing bank, by travel or you know, airline category, um, by all these benefits I just mentioned, which ones have free Wi-Fi, which ones have roadside assistance, et cetera. This was so easy to implement, we had a summer intern do it in 2014. Granted, he was a Stanford intern, but you know, he'll start his own company in a couple years, but he was able to complete it, and he launched it on his last day. So I'm gonna show it in action here. I'm gonna to go to the site right now and search for Virgin Atlantic, my favorite airline. We're gonna show uh, the actual get API query that's coming in with the query string and the card-based response. And this is bringing it all to life with the actual visuals here. So there's three Virgin Atlantic cards that have been historically issued. The bottom one is no longer available, but a lot of customers still have it and it's still honored. This is the Bank of America Virgin Atlantic Black Card. I have this card myself, so if you notice, the URL has changed at the top. Now we're looking at a specific card by its hash ID that shows you all the extended information, all of the attributes I was discussing on the previous slide. These are the ones that apply to the Virgin Atlantic Black Card. Somewhat more interesting than your standard airline card because this one gives you uh, one and a half miles per dollar on spend rather than the simple one mile per dollar that is more common with hotel and airline cards. And we did a little bit of machine learning for card base to show you what other cards the users have. So users of this card often have a Chase Sapphire and they often have the Amex Starwood Preferred Guest, which I just talked about. So how do others use card base? This tends to be used by publishers who want to add editorials or guides. So Million Mile Secrets is a partner of ours. They are a travel site. They're really focused on optimizing rewards for travel as a couple. Me and my fiance have actually learned a lot from them because we do travel around the world a lot as a couple. So they've taken 150 or so cards from Cardbase and added their own editorial on top of it, showing strategies for earning, strategies for redemption, you know, traveling for free and first class around the world. Bottom line is that when they have these cards displayed, they have all the attributes, and again, as they change, the reward rules change in the category, new benefits become available. It's reflected in real time on their site because they're using our API to power that data. We're also launching with US News and World Report. They have their college rankings, now they have credit card rankings, and they use our data to power that so they can provide the best advice to consumers, much more focused on cash back and you know, spending and saving money than travel, and it's another use case all powered by our data. So all this is good, it shows you a lot about what we do, um, but Cardbase is simply the search engine for cards. If you really wanna tie this to customers, you need Wasapi, it stands for Wallet as a Service API, and it is all the Cardbase information and also customer-centric information, tying it to not only saying, here's the Virgin Atlantic Black card, here's the Chase Sapphire Preferred, but how does Todd at Wallaby, what cards does he have? How does he use them? How is he spending on them? If Todd at Wallaby is going to go to Phil's Coffee down the street, which of those cards should he actually use when he goes to pay? So once again, there will be a pop quiz on this JSON, and we'll go into a little more details, but here you can actually see we're using connections to the financial institution as well. So you can connect as Todd at Wallaby. I have a Chase card, I have two cards from Amex, I have three cards from Bank of America. I can connect to that financial institution, match each of those cards to the historical transactions. That allows me to have a real-time view of my current balance, my next payment due date, my statement closing balance, as well as all of my transactions. And users of Wasapi can put all that data together, not only to show the true state of the wallet, not only what you have in it, but how you've been spending lately, if a card is maxed out, if it's getting close to uh, the end of the threshold for the reward, because you can only get you know, three points on dining for your first $1,500 that quarter. We know all that data in real time. So how do we use Wasapi? Quite simply, we power our own Wallaby apps with it. Hopefully everybody in this audience is a big fan of the Wallaby app. If not, I'll let you pause and download it, assuming you got your Wi-Fi connected. So there's three simple use cases for Wasapi. These are three of the many screens we have in our app. On the left is the most simple, just saying, based on a category of spend, your gas station, supermarket, or department store, uh, which of the cards in Todd's wallet um, should he be using for those? And then the next screen shows you some online merchants of the most popular ones. Again, in the past 10 years, as you know, rewards have gotten more competitive, they're not only tied to categories of spending, but they are tied to specific merchants. Chase Freedom during this quarter gives you 5% cash back on Amazon, and that includes online. Well, there is no Amazon offline. Offline, though, on the last screen is our uh, bread and butter. This is the location-centric, saying I'm gonna walk down the street, see what locations are nearby, and based on whether that location is a drugstore, a restaurant, or just a generic retail store, which of my cards should I use, not only to get the most cash back and the best points, but to contextualize to my wallet. 
So how do others use Wasapi? Once again, we've already licensed this for use in other apps. The Points Guy is another really popular travel blog and site, and they were able to launch an app last year using our technology. Um, they add a lot of their own layering on top of it. They have a lot of the same stuff we do in terms of saying, you know, here, connect your banks, here's your wallet. They show your spending, but they also show you how to optimize that for travel rewards because users of this app are very concerned about getting the best deal if they're traveling around the world and understanding foreign transactions, when they're going to get the uh, foreign transaction fee, et cetera, and we provide all that for them. So I'm going to show this in action as well. This is a screen from our app. So I'm going to go, I'm logged in as Todd. It's going to show my wallet. Here's a dashboard of my recent spend. And these are the cards I carry. I have a Chase Freedom. I have a Discover It. Once again, you're seeing the actual API call that's being issued by the app in real time and the JSON response. Next, I'm going to actually go and search for a location. So uh, we're in Pasadena. It's where our office is. Amar is my favorite coffee shop in Pasadena. So I'm going to search for that. It's going to come up on the first uh, response there. And this is going to show my wallet contextualized for this particular location. So it's going to go through all the different locations or all the different credit cards. Uh, your 1% cash back or the minimum I would earn because it's pointless to have a card that doesn't at least give you 1% cash back. That's my blue cash, my discover, and my chase freedom. Now you have the MX gold card. That's one membership reward per dollar. We value those at around 1.6 cents. Then you have your city double cash, which is 2% cash back, which is obviously 2 cents. But in this case, the winner would actually be the Chief Sapphire Preferred because it's two points on dining. And uh, this is a coffee shop, so it's concluded in dining. And we value those rewards pretty highly at about 1.7 cents. I personally value them even more because I use them to redeem for United Miles, which allow me to travel in business class on Lufthansa, which is awesome. So I'm a big fan of this card, obviously. So, big point of this is how could you use this in your app? For this example, I'm going to use an obscure startup. I think it's somewhere down the street, just launched recently. They're trying to solve the taxi problem. So the first two screens there, panel one and panel two, show you how it looks today. Most digital wallets do indeed tell you whether you have an Amex or a Visa. I'm assuming most of you in the audience do know how to tell the difference based on the first digit of the account number. So usually you will see, it'll say like, you know, I want to pay with my Amex or my Visa. But a lot of people carry more than one Amex, they carry more than one Visa. So if they were simply able to layer Wasapi in, this is how it could look in panel three and four. So not only saying, here I have my Discover, that's v other Visa's my Chase Freedom, that's my Amex Blue cash, but now I'm actually going to pay, I should be using my Chase Freedom because right now they're 2% on all uh, travel, or I've used uh, you know, $1,500 this month and I want to get that bonus, so Chase Freedom is the best card for me personally to use for this particular purchase. And it's that simple. So we do have a developer portal. Um, this is a chance for me to give some shout out to some of the technology we use. We are huge fans of something called Swagger. It allows us to actually, when we create the models in our code, and a lot of our core uh, architecture is written in Java, we use Swagger to actually document what that model looks like. And on the click of a button, that not only updates the documentation, but updates the live developer portal. So an example, once again, when Apple Pay rolled out last year, we had already launched our card base in Wasapi, but Apple Pay became another category, another attribute that we could add to the card because we wanted to basically profile and see what cards out there were already Apple Pay ready, and it certainly wasn't all of them, and it still isn't right now. So when we add that attribute by the click of a button, the developer portal was updated to reflect that, and we're always continuing to enhance our core models, and any licensed developer of Wasapi or card base has access to this data and always sees it up to date, and we don't have to translate to a technical writer. So yeah, big fan of that. API Blueprint helps us publish this data. Uh, highly recommend it if you are uh, in the API business. So light of all that. So we want to build a great app with you, right? So everyone in here builds financial apps. There's ways to delight users by helping them understand what the cards are, how those cards work, and how to help users save money, right? It's no longer good enough just to let people pay with their phone. You have to help them, right? And you have to enable them to be able to understand which cards are in their wallet, which card they might want to avoid because they're running out of room to buy, because the bill closes tomorrow. And we couldn't do those things for you. So we would love to talk to you more about how to integrate Cardbase or Wasapi into your experience online, on the web, or in mobile. Todd, myself, and Kim, our head of BD, will be upstairs at our booth later today. And we hope to speak to you soon. Thank you so much. OK, so the first question is, what are the advantages of providing card detail in a wallet? So I think the, the key advantage of providing card detail, it depends on which piece of detail there's different advantages. So in terms of the idea around 
What does the card look like? It helps make that connection between what people physically have right there, blue Chase Freedom card, and what's in their app. It helps them understand what they're using so they don't make mistakes. I don't know about everyone in the audience, but forget rewards. I can't keep track of which card, which Amex is my corporate card or which corporate card. So seeing that visual representation is really key, and it's a lot of work to maintain those things. That's what we do for you, right? The imagery, the, the card values, and then there's the secondary component around optimization of either rewards, cash flow, interest. Again, we, we always have this list because different users want to do different things, but people want to save money. If you can deliver value to them, think about this. With our API, you can tell people, hey, we just saved you 5%. You probably don't want to pay for that 5%. The bank is paying for that 5%. They want to pay that 5%. That's part of their rewards program. But you can show that value to the user and help them save money. OK. Are credit card offers really that complex that we need this? Well, that's a famous question. And the answer is yes. They're getting more and more complex all the time. And I'm sure there are people in the audience who only have one card. And it's probably hard for you to relate to this problem. But the average American has four credit cards. That's Federal Reserve data. Wallabies users, on average, have five. And there are cards that have bonuses, you know, a special weekend, the first Friday of the month, only on Tuesdays, up to a certain limit. They're, they're amazingly complex, but I think it's not just about rewards. We also want to emphasize that with the full Wasafi API suite, you're also able to manage against credit limits, bill due dates, room to buy, all those things that users really want to manage, and a combination thereof. So if you download our app, you'll be able to see what we call uh, recipes or options where you can set a very unique set for your own wallet. And you can say, look, I want to maximize rewards, but I want to not use more than 30% of my credit limit. And I don't want to use my card three days before it closes. And that's a lot for an average consumer to keep track of on an ongoing basis. You could do that today by going into all your individual banking apps and looking up that data, or we can do it for you all in one place. OK. Um, how does your wallet differ from wallets like Google, Apple, PayPal? So I think the thing about our wallet is it's non-transactional, right? We don't actually process the payment. That's not a business we're, quite frankly, very interested in. There's lots of great payment processors, but we make the choice of card really intelligent. And so you can think about our wallet being used in combination with the actual payment processing, especially when, in reality, most payments are still conducted by someone pulling something out of their pocket and swiping it. Um, in the world of data breaches, consumers need to know that their data won't be lost or stolen. How does Wallaby manage security on consumer data? I want to do that one. Well, the uh, standard for the industry is PCI DSS. We have gotten that certification every year we've been in business. Um, it's been really great for us because it's, uh, as far as an engineering culture, it, a lot of PCI DSS is practicing good discipline. Do you rotate your passwords every 90 days? Is your card data on a private network? So a lot of it is um, based on how we store that. We don't store the PAN, so there's a lot of things we're simply not liable for. Um, it's not something because we're not processing the transaction, but we take all the account data, your historical transactions, we take that just as seriously as if it were a PAN. So we put all of it to the same scrutiny and we go through a lot of uh, live penetration tests each year. I have to go out and personally visit every data center we're deployed in and make sure it's adhering to all the right policies and procedures. Uh, I believe uh, the famous target breach was because the HVAC was coming in, so we make sure that doesn't happen at the data centers that we're in, and so on and so on. Okay. We have one more here. Um, how many consumers are using the service today? How many client apps do they have in production today? So uh, we're part of a public company now, so there's a limit to the numbers we're allowed to disclose. I think the last time we disclosed numbers was near the start of the year when we have you know, more than 100,000 users. That's kind of what we're allowed to say. We don't want to get in trouble with the SEC. 